Hello, everybody, and welcome to the PacOps latest uh, webinar, Biodegradable Packaging Innovations. Uh, delighted uh, that you could join us today. Uh, my name is Paul Jenkins. I'm Managing Director of UK Packaging Innovation Consultancy, the PacUp. Uh, I'm joined today by my colleague, uh, Barrington Pamplin, who is our Technical Director, who will be uh, chairing the questions towards the end of the session and also delighted to be joined uh, by Christophe Jordan, Managing Director of Translucent Papers and Smart Papers at RJ Wiggins. And he will be talking about their Silvicta uh, product, which is a translucent functional barrier paper, uh, which is fully recyclable and compostable uh, and a very exciting addition to the packaging innovation spectrum. So what will we be covering over the next 55 minutes? Very similar format to those of you who've joined us in the past, um, the obligatory 60 seconds on, on the pack up and our innovation zone packaging database. Uh, we're then gonna split the, the biodegradable and compostable packaging innovations into two sections. So we'll do the first one uh, and, and then we'll uh, hear from Christoph, uh, who will be talking about his, uh, his company's translucent barrier paper. Uh, we'll then switch back into talking about some more packaging uh, innovations from a biodegradable and compostable point of view. Uh, and then we'll detail uh, information about our next event. So get your questions in. There is a, uh, a Q&A uh, section at the bottom. So um, you're able to, to ask any questions uh, for Christoph and, and indeed for me. Um, you will get a link uh, to this webinar recording post event, uh, like all our webinars. Uh, they will be also available um, on our PackUp um, YouTube page, youtube.com forward slash the PackUp. So a little bit about the, um, the PackUp. So we're a leading packaging innovation consultancy, sort of four areas of, of support for brands, retailers, suppliers, um, and anyone really interested in, in taking their, their packaging forward. So we offer uh, technical support and project management. So Barry and his team uh, are well placed to help you, uh, however big or small uh, the, the packaging project uh, may be. Uh, obviously, we also do events, webinars, and where permitted, hopefully in the not too distant future, we'll be back doing face-to-face -face events. Uh, we've done about ten or eleven in the in the past, and we're really looking forward to seeing people face to face once again. Uh, we also do um, reports, so we've published a number over the years. Our latest being a global packaging trends um, compendium. Um, and last but not means least, we've got a, a packaging innovation zone database, uh, really easy to use uh, over, now over 4,700 packaging initiatives where we load uh, 20 new innovations uh, every week from, from concept to in-market launch. Uh, we're tracking innovations across about 15 different languages so not just a UK perspective but very much a global one so a really good way of uh, keeping teams up to speed uh, and inspiring get those ideas coming uh, for your next new packaging project so a number of different um, brands retailers suppliers uh, that uh, already benefit from from the service um, we've just recently launched, as I've mentioned, uh, our latest global packaging trends uh, compendium. Um, what we've done is, is, is looked at all the innovations that are coming to our attention and clustered them into nine new packaging trends. So I'm just going to very quickly uh, review those for you before we go into talk about specifically biodegradable and compostable packaging. Now, the first one is, is trend is, is naturally done, which is very much uh, a trend area. Uh, specific to, to today's topic. Um, there's been a, a significant amount of compostable, biodegradable and bio-based examples, both in development and coming to market. Um, lots of challenges around um, established industrial composting systems and not necessarily being in place in most markets. So the, the compostable sector is a bit of a turning point. Um, well, you know, the infrastructure isn't quite in place uh, in most places. Um, home compostability is still relatively niche with most consumers not necessarily having the space or the will or the knowledge to participate potentially. Um, and there's concerns around contaminating existing waste streams. Cost is also a, a, a bit of a barrier uh, in terms of 
uh, being more expensive than conventional packaging. Um, and so there's a lot of potential investment required from a brand or retailer uh, to, to really see the, the full benefits. But there are lots of examples coming to market. It's it's very vibrant. There's 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 lots going on. Um, it does tend to be um, certainly from a compostable packaging point of view, um, more small challenger brands looking for a sustainable point of difference than uh, than the bigger players. Although we do have one one good example from a a major brand owner that is, is experimenting with compostable packaging, which we'll talk about uh, in a moment. So that's the one of one of the trends and, the, and our main focus for today of very briefly, just almost one sentence per, per trend, uh, review the others for your, for your, for your uh, acknowledgement. So everyday engagement, that's about um, those packaging examples that are designed to engage and interact uh, with end users, um, you know, things like RFID, NFC, QR codes, uh, lots of activity in that area. Um, the growth of e-commerce, the online surge uh, is significant. Uh, the sector has potentially grown more in the last 12 months than any time in the last 20 years, obviously due to COVID-19 restrictions and consumers uh, shopping a, a, an awful lot more um, online than they would have done previously. Uh, so we're seeing lots of packaging innovations uh, related to uh, the e-commerce the e channel. Uh, making life easy, so that's all around added functionality that's easy to use and makes life uh, easier for consumers. And that continues to be popular. So we've, we've, we've tracked with, uh, a number of innovations in that area. Uh, materially changed. Uh, this is one of the most prominent sections in our, in our report really, and in our innovation zone. So we continue to report many instances of brands and retailers switching uh, materials, primarily from plastic to other sort of more, more paper-based alternatives. Um, so, you know, um, the reality is that we're experiencing a, a cycle of high change um, where, where, where more and different materials are, are being uh, being trialed uh, and, and introduced a lot of the time at the, um, at the sacrifice of, of plastic. We could have a big debate, uh, which we won't be having today, about the, uh, the merits of switching out of plastic. Um, and this is not about... Um, you know, uh, analysing, you know, which material was best for, uh, for this particular uh, webinar. Um, the next uh, area is, is protect and preserve. So that's about uh, sort of the prevention of food waste, which continues to be a, a really uh, quite horrific problem worldwide with something, you know, estimates of 50% of all food produced globally is never eaten. And the waste of food is valued at over a trillion dollars, which is just mind boggling. So lots of innovations that uh, using technology to to improve that through sort of barrier protection and uh, uh, sort of smart in indicators and things like that. Um, recycling, so um, massive area of, 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 of change. Um, we've got packaging taxes coming in, which is encouraging the, the increased the, the use of recycled content uh, and just about every brand and owner and retailer and supplier is is working on improving uh, their recyclability of the, of the products that they that they sell uh, last but not least in terms of the the nine trends that we tracked is uh, getting noticed so that's all about uh, packaging uh, that stands out on supermarket shelves or even in in, in kitchen cupboards um, it's you know it's about getting noticed and uh, uh, to be bought and then bought again. So the uh, pack's first impression can be the you know can be the difference between success and failure in this ever increasing competitive marketplace. So we are continuing to track innovations in that area. In that area, and last but not least is is the refill uh, change. Really, it hasn't been impeded by COVID nineteen. Really, although obviously it, it, um, for. From an uh, operational point of view, there's been some challenges, but it, it, the, that market continues to grow uh, quite quite well. Um, things like dry food, household and personal care sectors are the ones that are making the most ground at the moment, but we continue to track lots of refillable and reusable packaging uh, examples. So they're the nine trends, and as I said, we're going to focus on the first one, which is naturally done, which is covers really sort of biodegradable and compostable packaging. Now, just a bit of context before we, we, we look at some innovations. I mean, it, 
uh, biodegradable packaging is, is quite a, um, there's no real def definitive universal measurement really you, you could be argued. Um, when something is biodegradable, it means that it can be broken down naturally by all microorganisms uh, such as bacteria. Um, the term does not define the lengths of time needed for products to, to decompose and this can vary quite widely. Uh, a lot of products will break down naturally um, but some may take many years to do so and can still be defined as biodegradable. So um, many packaging products require specific conditions. Well, in fact, they all require specific conditions to break down properly. So, you know, even a banana skin will take a couple of years to, to, to uh, biodegrade if, if, if not in the right, right conditions. Uh, on the other hand, we've got compostable products uh, that are made from natural materials such as starch and, and decompose fully into compost uh, without producing toxic residue as they break down and to be classified as compostable um, they have to meet certain specific requirements um, such as the EN 13432 which requires compostable plastics to disintegrate after 12 weeks and completely biodegrade after six months. So um, this isn't a, uh, a straightforward category really there, there's a lot of um, uh, there is some interpretation in terms of what is uh, uh, biodegradable uh, in terms of how long it takes and, and, and the environment it needs to, 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 to break down in. So um, but the purpose of this, this webinar really is to, is to show you what's going coming through the market. So we're, we're not necessarily an endorsement of best practice. Uh, we, we think it's important to reflect what is going on. Uh, you may see some of these and in terms of um, the, the ones that take lot, you know, that, that may encourage, seemingly encourage um, littering because they can break down in natural environment. Um, you, you may argue that that is not necessarily the best thing for the for the environment. But what we're doing is really uh, reflecting what is going on in the market. So without further ado, the first one is uh, from Swedish-based Embalata Innovation Centre, which has collaborated with Rencon to develop a, a bio-based alternative to fossil-based plastics with a material containing uh, lignin. Uh, known as Rennol, this material is a byproduct of paper production mixed with a natural oil. Uh, the aim of the project was to, to produce a material that contained a, a high level uh, of lignin um, so as to produce a, a product with a lower carbon footprint compared to uh, apparently conventional plastic manufacturing processes. It is also recyclable and creates a circular production process. The material has a number of different packaging applications that it, it can be utilized in. Uh, it can also be used for injection molding applications, uh, for non-packaging applications such as furniture and automotive parts. Uh, it is contained, it is claimed that products can contain up to 50% renal and still perform uh, as expected. Now, a number of the innovations that we're tracking uh, are in the market. They are sort of university type developments, and this is a, 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 a good example of that. So this is from, from India. So researchers from the National Institute of Ocean Technology based in uh, Chennai in India have developed a, a new bioplastic film made from marine seaweed. The solution renders the same physical and mechanical properties of conventional plastics. Apparently, uh, the film is a combination of a species of red algae seaweed uh, and a uh, polyethylene glycol PEG 3000 plasticizer. A PEG is uh, a non-toxic polymer often applied to enhance the thermos plasticity of the polymer used in medicinal applications, for example. Um, the new film will break down in the environment without any toxicity and no biomass used for feedstocks have been used. Uh, the algae, uh, importantly, is inexpensive as well as rapid to grow. So we'll... Um, uh, will grow in about 45 days using sunlight only uh, without the use of fresh water or any chemical intervention. Um, so that definitely ticks a box from an environmental point of view. Uh, the polymers are similar to the plant-based versions used in food packaging applications apparently that facilitate good oxygen and moisture uh, permeability uh, to, to help extend shelf life. Uh, not only can the bioplastic polymers uh, biodegrade naturally without producing any toxic wastes, but they can also be disposed of through ordinary food waste collection. Next up from Canada, this is uh, Casado Burritos and Tacos restaurant chain, and they're moving uh, their burrito packaging from aluminium 
based to biodegradable paper from, uh, from this April. This will remove uh, about 45,000 uh, kilograms uh, of aluminium foil from being sent to landfill over the next five years. Um, aluminium is a traditional form of packaging uh, for, for burritos um, and when not recycled is estimated to take uh, about four to 500 years to fully degrade if it ends up in, in landfill. Um, the, the company are trying to justify the, 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 the switch from aluminium um, by you know, talking about how uh, energy hungry um, the, the material is. Um, and, um, you know, at the same time producing around 12 tons of greenhouse, greenhouse gases. Um, if the rollout is successful, the intention is to remove aluminium from all of their restaurants. Um, and the restaurant chain currently also donates uh, a small percentage of its sales to, to non-profit environmental organizations as well. Another algae-based initiative, this time from uh, Stuttgart in Germany, the University of Tübingen uh, has developed a potentially revolutionary way of using blue-green algae to produce a sustainable alternative to conventional oil-based plastics. Uh, the research team has altered uh, the metabolism of the bacteria and are now able to produce a natural plastic potentially capable of being scaled up uh, to industrial quantities. Uh, the blue-green algae of the, um, produces PHB, uh, which is a natural form of plastic. It has similar properties to polypropylene, but degrades quickly without releasing any pollutants. The production of the blue-green algae only requires CO2 and sunlight again, and is believed to be highly suitable for climate-friendly and sustainable production. Uh, going forward, the intention is to, to optimize the process to be able to produce industrial amounts of this this bioplastic. So this is this is not going to be in the market anytime soon. And um, but you know, interesting to see uh, how this and the other algae development uh, progresses over time. Now, when you talk about biodegradable packaging, particularly to, to non-packaging people, they often mention sort of mushroom-based packaging. And um, so it's, I think it's worth sort of mentioning this one. So the, the magical mushroom company uh, is a UK-based startup. Uh, that has started, uh, commenced a, a large scale production of, of mushroom based packaging. Um, the Isha, sorry, based UK business is the sole license to manufacture the mushroom packaging for the UK and the EU. Uh, the biodegradable mushroom uh, package based packaging is, is home compostable and has similar functional properties uh, to conventional uh, polystyrene and is comparable in terms of cost. It is already in use uh, for packaging across various products, such as for cooking appliances, cosmetics, as well as uh, for a non-alcoholic gin brand, as you can see here from Diageo called Seedlip. Uh, it, is it is manufactured using a patented uh, composite process developed by Ecoffative e e Design, I can never say that, as, as featured previously uh, in the innovation zone uh, they've been on our radar for a while now. Uh, it creates a, a composite material from agricultural byproducts, uh, and the living material continues to grow and takes on the desired shape. Uh, the growth is stopped by heating, uh, and then the material hardens. Um, the first production facility has a capacity of over 1 million units per year. We plan to increase that to more than 3 million units uh, with the opening of a, UK, a second UK plant in due course. Uh, the packaging is claimed to be 100% biodegradable and decomposes on domestic com compost uh, within 40 days. In water, the material reportedly completely degrades in just 180 days. Next up, so this is from uh, Finland, uh, the Alta University based in Espoo, and they're developing uh, wood-based foam materials for a variety of packaging applications. Uh, the Smart Foams research project is looking to commercialise their outputs. The €1 million Euro, uh, budget project is, is part of a drive to replace plastic from wood-based materials and is using artificial intelligence uh, to fulfil the research needs. The, the foam development aims to create a solution with wood-like functional attributes such as its strength, flexibility and heat resistance. A mixture of the compounds uh, lingon, wood fibre and lamponite can be combined to produce a foam that resists shock and humidity uh, to potentially replace plastic. The project utilises machine learning where several combinations of materials and processes could be excluded to accelerate the development work. Artificial intelligence uses previous data to show how to add the desired feature 
uh, with less effort. So that's quite an interesting new use of technology. The, the foam material was reported to be similar to cork uh, and is also ten, uh, tens of times lighter. Uh, the foam apparently is edible, although it doesn't look particularly um, enticing. And the mythology uh, makes it possible to produce foam from materials such as um, carrot, crank, cranberry, cranberry, and, and be uh, beetroot powder. Next up is Mexico-based Zubex Industrial, who, who have developed a new biodegradable, flexible plastic packaging solution. The business has managed to create a solution that not only uh, fully biodegrades, but also reduces the amount of plastic used. The Zubiox uh, branded technology sees a packaging solution that, that not only maintains the attributes of traditional plastic packaging, but will biodegrade in landfill in around 26 months. So when I mentioned earlier about the different times for, for these sort of end of life scenarios, uh, this one is 26 months in landfill apparently, which obviously is, is decades faster than conventional plastic. Uh, it is also claimed that the Zubiox technology delivers uh, greater gloss, transparency, and barrier than conventional plastic. So it has some functional attributes, uh, apparently superior to plastic, as well as uh, being biodegradable in just over two years. Uh, products incorporating the technology absorb moisture in landfills rather than repel like regular plastic materials. This encourages microbes to the surface of the plastic. Uh, that they secrete enzymes that attract more microbes to multiply their effect to engage the biodegradation process. A couple more before we hear from Christoph. Um, single use expanded polystyrene uh, has a long history of delivering food and uh, medicine cold chain products. However, it's, it's good functional attributes are you know, undermined by the fact that it's difficult to recycle and is also not biodegradable. So a new material hopes to, to beat those issues with a, a solution made from discarded paper. The recyclable alternative is made from paper waste rather than from an oil based source. The material has been developed by scientists from Dresden University of Technology. Uh, the production process involves converting shredded paper waste into a slurry. This waste utilized might otherwise be dumped or burned. A proprietary process dries the slurry into mats of cellulose fiber material. Uh, the new material exhibits low density and narrow pore size to, to act as an effective form of insulation. Uh, the material can be fully recycled at existing facilities, although the mats incorporate a waterproof outer plastic film wrap that has to be separated for recycling. Um, the mats will also biodegrade, um, although not the outer film wrap, obviously, um, should its end of life end up in, in landfill. Uh, sorry, I said two more. There are just now two more, so I can't count. Uh, so the next one is a new technology developed by one of Europe's uh, leading research institutes, VTT. They've been quite active in this area. Um, they're developing a replacement for fossil-based PET. The research team are using agricultural waste from citrus peel and sugar beet pulp as raw material for bio-based uh, PEF. Uh, pectin is a natural occurring substance. Uh, found in berries, apples, and other fruits. Uh, utilizing the pectin-containing waste streams opens up new opportunities for a circular economy approach to plastics. It is anticipated that the carbon footprint of bottles created this way could be lowered by 50% by replacing PET and PEF polymers. Uh, PEF is a, a high-performance, fully recyclable and renewable plastic. So the last one before we hear from Christoph, uh, plastic pa waste you know, is, it continues to be a be a real challenge. Um, the, the National Graphic uh, Geographic reports that 79% of apparently ends up uh, in, in, in landfill or accumulated in the environment. Um, a new patented ingredient has been developed incorporating biodegradable plastics. Um, it has passed the ASTM 6954 standard for ox so oxidization uh, to the molecular level of less than 5,000 MW molecular weight. At this point, the material was degraded enough where bioorganisms bio are able to consume and convert into air, water, and less than 1% of the salt. So this is done by Australia-based Pact Earth, and their solution has the advantage of being recyclable as well as being naturally biodegradable. Okay, so uh, hopefully that was uh, of, of interest, and we'll, as I said, we'll, we'll cover off uh, some more innovations that have come across the Innovation Zone desk uh, shortly. Uh, I'm now delighted to 
to hand over to Christoph Jordan, who's going to walk you through uh, his presentation. He spent uh, nearly two years at uh, independent paper manufacturer R.J. Wiggins, where he is now managing director, translucent papers and smart papers. Uh, the business has developed an exciting new uh, translucent paper product called Silvicta with uh, several packaging applications. Um, but that's enough from me. Uh, Christoph, over to you. I'm just going to uh, unshare my screen. Perfect, Christoph. Over to you. You can see. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Good afternoon, um, everyone. Um, thanks to uh, the Packer for hosting my speech. So it's my pleasure to take you through an innovation in the biodegradable packaging field. Um, that is to say, a translucent and high barrier paper that we have named Sidvicta. So first, maybe just a word on uh, our Jogins. So our Jogins, we our paper maker, a leader in creative, translucent, um, packaging and technical papers. We've got four production sites worldwide, um, one in, uh, in near Aberdeen in Scotland, one in uh, Kent, one in uh, Spain near Barcelona, and finally one in China. And then we've got also one uh, dedicated R&D lab in France, and I'm quite sure that you can tell from my accent that uh, it is where I'm based. We uh, are about uh, 800 plus um, employees and with more than 300 years of savoir-faire. So uh, what, what I mean by that is that if I take our elder, eldest mill in uh, Guaro Casas in Spain, uh, it's been funded uh, at the end of the 17th century and our two UK mills, uh, the first half of the 18th century. So we've got a bit of history and, uh, and myself, I'm the seventh generation of paper makers as well. So I think that as a group and as an individual, uh, yes, we do have paper in our blood. And important maybe to mention that all of our sites are FSC license holders and PAFC certified, as well as uh, ISO 14001. That's it for, the, for, for who we are. Now, I think it's fair to say that our market and business context is very much driven uh, by the climate change and replacing plastic challenge that is ahead of us. So I'm sure the pictures on the left-hand side will, uh, will uh, ring a bell to you. We've seen that, it's quite shocking, but that's the public concern that we have been expressing uh, over the last couple of years, and that is even more and more pressing. To answer this public concern, and um, some great international initiatives have been launched in the recent years. Um, I'm just focusing here, just uh, pointing it uh, three of them. First one is the WWF. Um, really calling for the UN for a treaty on plastic pollution. Uh, then the UN themselves, so they have uh, raised 17 goals. Um, so they call it the Sustainable Development Goals, as that some of you uh, may, uh, may know and adhere to, and that's to be achieved by 2030. So I realize it's not tomorrow, but it's, it's the day after tomorrow. And then we've got the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, um, for which uh, more than 20 governments and 250 a large businesses have signed the global commitment for a more circular economy. So there's a concern. There are some great international initiatives. Now, what is in fact really the challenge that we are all faced with, uh, with plastic? So this illustration is extracted from a, a report called Breaking the Plastic Wave. And um, I encourage you to read it. Very, very interesting one issued in 2020, available from the net. So on the left-hand side, there is what they call the business as usual scenario, basically the do-nothing scenario. So in the do-nothing scenario, we are currently producing um, about 250 million tons of plastic every year uh, that is then wasted. And by 2040, this will grow to 430 uh, uh, million tons. A proportion of that is already recycled. It will slightly increase, but not massively if we do, if we do nothing, because we know what the recycling streams are today. It's re relatively limited. So it's about 10%, 9% uh, precisely of the, of the plastics that is currently uh, recycled. Then we've got a proportion of it which is disposed. When we say disposed, it's really in uh, landfill and incineration, but at least in a more it's sort of controlled manner, even if it's not reused or recycled. And then 56% of the plastic being produced is what they call mist managed. Basically, it's what finishes in open burning area or terrestrial, terrestrial pollution or ocean pollution. That's, that's a massive amount. 
but it's not a fatality. So they are proposing a really a systemic change and a system change in their system change scenario. There are a couple of things that we can all do. Um, they believe that up to 30% of the plastic currently produced could be uh, reduced. When they say reduced, it's either to eliminate through, uh, through uh, eco consumption, eco design, uh, or it is to reuse and refill. And you've touched that, uh, Paul, earlier in your, in your speech. Then there is a proportion that can be substituted. And that represents that accounts for 17% of it. And substitution, one of the obvious substitution is paper, but Paul has also showed some others, okay, so some other compostable materials. Paper in that is believed to be about 8% of it. So that's already a couple of million tons. Um, so what we're saying here is that paper is not a solution for all of the plastic replacement, for certain. Plastic is doing a great job in many instances, but okay, we've got a role to play as, as paper makers. Then the part of recycling should increase as well by introducing new recycling streams and extending the recycling streams as well to not only to our uh, uh, very developed countries, but also to the slightly less developed countries. That's really where the key is. Still a part to be disposed. And the whole objective of this, uh, of this uh, uh, paradigm change is really to move the mismanaged portion from 56% to only 10% of it. So, I think that you are convinced that paper has got a role to play as other materials, but we've got a role to play. So that's why as, at Arjogins, we have, as the paper makers for so many years, we have decided to uh, work on it. So we spent about two and a half years engineering a paper um, that we named Silvicta. And that is, we believe, a replacement in many occasions of um, uh, single-use plastic in food industry, but not, not only food industry, it's also cosmetics, it's also um, uh, consumer electronics, so it's also pharmaceutical. That's the field that we are targeting. So what is Silvicta? Um, Silvicta in a nutshell, it's, uh, it's uh, clean, naturally translucent and sustainable packaging material, okay? So when we say naturally translucent, um, you need to compare it to a, a classical, uh, to usual tracing uh, sheet of paper. So. It's not as transparent as plastic. It will probably never be as transparent as plastic, but we believe that it is an acceptable trade-off when we're trying to make something uh, better for, the, for our planet. So what we are trying to do with this paper is to keep the aroma, freshness, flavor, and grease inside the, inside the, uh, the food, the food container, and then to prevent the oxygen, the odors, mineral oil, and moisture to penetrate. To penetrate. And I'm coming uh, back um, to that in, uh, in the next slide. Really, the idea here is to preserve uh, the aroma, the freshness, uh, and to protect the food as plastic can do. So if we look now a bit more in detail at our uh, characteristics. So if I take the environmental characteristics, which is, which is absolutely key for, for, for the audience today. So our paper is uh, fully biodegradable. And biodegradable, you've got two things. You've got the soil degradability and you've got the marine degradability. So we, we've got both, okay? So we've got certificates for all of that. Then we've got also uh, compostability. So our paper is fully compostable, both in home compost and also in industrial compost. And again, you know that it's two different uh, conditions. So it's important for us to, to be able to fit and to pass those two certificates. Because it is only cellulosic fibers, it's purely cellulosic fibers with no, uh, no additions to that, no chemical, chemicals added. It is fully recyclable in the traditional paper stream. So no need for a new stream. Uh, or you just using the standard paper stream recyclability, and then it can be repulped uh, in, a, in, a, in another packaging paper. And then it is carbon neutral paper. Uh, it's not a surprise to you that yes, paper we do emit some uh, carbon uh, uh, some carbon emissions when we produce paper. So what we're doing first of all is uh, we've got programs to decrease the carbon emissions uh, year after year, and secondly, when we cannot uh, avoid the carbon emission, we compensate it uh, through the uh, World Land Trust uh, Association. So all of our paper is then carbon neutral. And we are also, by the way, it's not mentioned here, but using 100% uh, FSC pulp, uh, so um, sustainably managed uh, pulp coming from Europe. So we try to do it as local as we can as well. In terms of food safety characteristics, 
obviously it is a food contact paper, uh, food contact paper. So we got the FDA certificate, which is an easy one. I think you will agree. Um, but we are also uh, BFR 36, which is a bit more uh, demanding. And we are also uh, passing the uh, Chinese regulation, uh, which is even more demanding than the BFR 36. Then we are zero plastic. Again, it's, uh, it's pure cellulose material. Um, and that's how you know, by the way, that it's only pure cellulose is because it is translucent. If we, if we were to add uh, something in it, it would not be translucent anymore. <laughs> we would kill the translucency. It is a very high mineral oil barrier. A mineral oil is typically what's contained in, our, in the inks. So it's very important that it does not contaminate the food. So it is a great barrier to mineral oil. We've tested it, obviously. Um, and then it is naturally translucent. So on the, on the contrary of some other uh, transparent paper on the market, it's not uh, uh, chemically transparentized. It is really uh, natural. And then in terms of functionality, and that's, that's an interesting bit as well. So we can offer a very high barrier to oxygen. And when I say high barrier, even if it, if it may sound difficult to believe, but please trust me, and our paper, if you take a sheet of 62 gram or 82 gram of our paper, it's a higher barrier to oxygen than any plastic in the world. So better than better miles, better than PETs and P, than PPs and BOPP, than PLA, than, than any, any material you can think of. So it is a very, very high oxygen barrier, which by the way, helps also extending even the shelf life of some, of some fresh products um, by avoiding the, uh, the spoilage with air. Very high aroma barrier. It goes a little bit along, obviously, with the oxygen. If the oxygen cannot go uh, go inside, the aroma can go outside. Um, so for tea, for uh, coffee, for uh, smelly food or like pet food, for example, very important. Very high grease barrier. So it is of the highest level of grease barrier, higher than any of the uh, grease materials. So the kit test is is uh, twelve for those of you who know. So very high barrier to grease. And it is finally versatile in terms of functionality. What I mean here is that it's a paper, so it can be printed, it can be hot stamped, it can be uh, foiled, it can be glued, it can be, I mean, there's a lot, a lot of applications like, like you could think for any sheet of paper. So I think to summarize it's really for, the, for what I believe you are, if you are attending this seminar, this webinar, it's because you're eco-conscious brand owners, retailers, and converters. So we have now uh, developed this food contact paper with very high barrier properties and ready for manufacturing in traditional uh, packing lines, obviously. Now I'm going to, go to take you through a couple of, uh, of more concrete applications that we are targeting or that we have already launched with this, uh, with this paper and just to also give you ideas and, and, and raise a bit of your, your imagination. So on the top here, I'm showing I'm going to classify by packaging type. Is it windows? Is it containers? Is it floor, floor packs? On the left-hand side, different food types. So that's just because, as you know, different food types have got very uh, different needs in terms of packaging and needs different characteristics. So when I show across here, it means that it's a project that is already live. We've got commercial products, or it's we are uh, in advanced trials already with, with converters, very advanced trials. So overlays for typically chocolate boxes, for example, a relatively uh, straightforward application. This is an interesting one as well. You, you have certainly noticed that more and more of the food trays that you can find on supermarket are made of uh, carton board, of uh, boards, or even of molded pulp. Uh, but each of them is still uh, laid, uh, laid by a plastic film. So our paper can be a very good replacement, very straightforward replacement for leading film. It still allows to have a level of transparency to be able to see through. And that's a comment very often from the, from the consumers. And then we are working as well a lot with uh, coffee pods manufacturers to replace the leads and to have fully compostable uh, coffee pods. If I take Windows now, so Windows application for uh, food to go, for example. So if you think about your uh, sushi boxes or that, again, it's all uh, carton board, paper trays already, but we can now replace with a, with a plastic, with a paper film uh, to act as a window and sandwich wedges as well. And we've got some very uh, um, long standing and hot topics with that or projects replacing the plastic window of the, of the packaging of the sandwich wedge. Um, worldwide. Packaging type, uh, so it can be wraps as well, used as wraps. So this top picture here, it's, uh, it's a sandwich, a fresh sandwich that you can find in uh, some of your um, 
shops in Aldi shops uh, in the UK, by the way, um, so which allows to keep the freshness of the of the sandwich and still see through. And then this example here of, of a wrap, I think it's interesting to point it out because as you can see, it's not anymore translucent because we have metallized it. In fact, what happened is that we've got a number of our converters who've got, who have been able to metallize Silvita either by transfer metallization or by uh, direct metallization under vacuum. And you end up with a, with a metallized effect, but also with much improved uh, barrier properties, typically to, moist, to moisture, to UV. Very handy, very useful in the margarine or butter, uh, butter area, but not only. We are really getting close in terms of characteristics to what aluminum foil can do. Really getting close. Flow packs, doy packs, bags, that's a very busy space for us because it's quite a straightforward uh, space. So we've got a lot already of cases of uh, standard pouches, for example, containing uh, granolas, containing dry fruits, containing nuts, and any kind of, uh, of uh, food. We've got here, I'm showing this example because it's, it's an example which I hope you will be able to see in the supermarkets uh, during the summer uh, this year. Uh, it's uh, salad bags. And, uh, and the, the trick here is that salad, some of those salad bags are wrapped under modified atmosphere. So you need to have a material which, which, uh, which protects, which keeps the modified atmosphere without allowing the oxygen to go through, obviously. So quite a highly, for simple, what you could think of a simple application, it's quite a highly engineered, actually, version of, uh, of Silvita. And of course, for those examples, you can see that it is sealed. So uh, the converter is, a, is applying a heat seal uh, on, the, on, the, on the paper. And then I take this picture as well because pet food, as some of you may know, is a very difficult food to wrap, very difficult replacement because currently it's typically a four ply with paper, then P, then aluminum foil, then another P. That's how typical construction because it's a very smelly food, uh, very oily food as well. So it's, we have, uh, we are working heavily on that, and uh, and uh, I'm glad to say that we have uh, cracked the code on this one, so to be able to to wrap uh, pet food uh, with a fully recyclable material. Then containers and trays, uh, those those sort of cans here, uh, round cans. Uh, it's um, terrible to uh, to recycle, as you know. It's uh, paper, uh, carton plus aluminium plus plastic, so it's got the three of, of it. So we are working on laminating Silvita inside the, the carton board, inside, inside it, uh, to then replace the plastic foil. This is an, another example where uh, Silvita is, um, has been laminated to a board to make some, uh, some ice cream uh, uh, containers, for example. And this is to illustrate, obviously, it's not an example with paper uh, yet. So it's under development. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, converters around the world trying to um, mold our Silvita paper to form trays like for, uh, for processed meat. And finally, the labels space. Um, it should be an obvious one. I'm, I must say I'm quite surprised that it's not, it's not bigger yet. I'm quite sure it's going to become big because there, there are some legislation more and more, at least in France. I'm sure it's going to come as well in other geographies whereby when you've got labels on top of your fruits or vegetables, it must be compostable. Okay, so not it cannot anymore be plastic. So we've got a solution with our with our paper to make it compostable, and also I'm crossing other arrows here, other crosses because um, because you also have some other areas where you were typically in the food to go or snacks, uh, you've got still a ceiling round disc of plastic being used to seal the packaging, and this is an obvious replacement for Silvita to replace it by uh, by a paper seal once you have also done all the job, the rest of the job to remove the rest of the of the plastic. So this this matrix here is, is not to be comprehensive. Okay, so you can see there are still some blank area. It doesn't mean that we, we, we are uh, that we are we cannot meet some requirements here. It's just that we've not yet had a, a live project on it. But I'm relying on, on you in the audience to uh, push us <laughs> into those, uh, those new, uh, new area for us. But you can see that there's already a lot of spaces where a paper like Silvita, but maybe others, but a paper like Silvita, super high barrier, can play a role and help you replace some of the single-use plastics. 
Um, now, and it is my last slide, I'm just gonna give you some commercial applications. Uh, so concrete applications where we've been allowed to, to advertise it uh, because some of the converters don't necessarily want us to, uh, to advertise what has been done with our paper. So here we've worked, we work with a number of, uh, of uh, converters around the, around the world and mostly across, uh, across Europe. And one of them is, is uh, Saren, um, a very uh, important partner for us in the UK. And they have developed a whole range of packaging called Earth Packaging with Earth Film and Earth Park that you may have heard about. And so what they have launched in the, in quite recently, uh, this, typically this pouch here, this pouch is a standard pouch where the construction, it is Silvita that has been bonded with a thin paper, uh, with a thin craft to get some strength and also the look of it as well. Um, and fully, fully recyclable containing uh, coffee, uh, coffee beans. This one here, Pulsitos. Pulsitos is a, is a brand that has started, but that was in fact our first commercial uh, launch two years ago, and uh, a year and a half ago, and uh, it's uh, uh, dried nuts. Okay, and here it's uh, purely Silvita, 62 gram, which has been all over printed, as you can see, so it does print very well. It looks really beautiful as well. This is to illustrate an example, which is non-food, which is cosmetics. Uh, so it's Jizu brand for hair perfume. Uh, whereby they have replaced some uh, uh, plastic sachet to contain the hair perfume by a paper, uh, paper sachet, which gives uh, a nice look, nice feel and touch as well of the product, quite luxury uh, feel as well. And then finally, that's the last example, that's the latest uh, uh, lounge that they've had, uh, Skinner's Pet Food. It's a UK brand that you may, uh, may know, maybe. And as I said, pet food is, is a difficult one. <laughs> so we've cracked the code. And so here's the construction is also Silvita binded with, uh, with another uh, paper to make it uh, stronger and, uh, and fully recyclable. So I hope that uh, during this uh, 20 minute speech, I've been able to uh, convince if needed uh, that, uh, that there are some solutions on the market. I mean, our papers are commercially available. So um, it is available on the market, available to you. Uh, I think there are many, many solutions that exist. And I believe that our solution can be a good answer to the challenge that we are all uh, facing currently with plastic removal. Thanks for your attention. So Paul, over to you probably. Paul? I'm just trying to unmute, sorry. Um, right, are you able to um, unshare your screen? Uh, yes, that's oh, yeah. what I have. I've done it. Yes, no one. You've yeah. done that, right? Perfect. Yes, okay, I will share my screen, and we're good to go for the last five or ten minutes. Okay. okay. So, um, thank you very much, Christoph. We've got some great questions coming in, so we'll come to them shortly. I've just got uh, four or five new um, compostable and biodegradable packaging innovations to talk about. Um, I mentioned at the beginning about um, this territory being quite often um mainly smaller and challenger brands but this is an example where uh, a major player is, is is looking to move into the compostable space so this is mars wrigley um and they're moving us uh, packaging production of their skittles product into home compostable film uh, by the end of this year in a collaboration with uh, danamar scientific they will pack skittles into danamar's uh, nodax pa pha material um, and PHA is manufactured from oils such as soy and canola uh, through a natural fermentation process and breaks down in both household and industrial compost settings. So that is a really interesting development from a major player and one which we will uh, monitor its progress with, with great interest. Um, next up, um, Sydney-based supplier of compostable packaging for e-commerce, Hero Packaging, is on a mission to remove the single-use plastic in, in Australia via the introduction of a new mailer. Uh, the material is home compostable and it's waterproof and durable to perform in a similar way to plastic. The certified home compostable material has uh, apparently already saved 3 million plastic mailers from being used through a range of Hero Pack ship shipping bags. Uh, Hero Packaging has also has a home compostable padded mailer uh, called Hero Bubble that contains FSC certified compostable paper. Uh, also down under, this time in New Zealand, uh, a new partnership between uh, For the Better Good Social Enterprise and a local chocolate manufacturer, uh, Whittakers, has commenced that has a uh, firm focus on sustainability. Um, Whittakers 
Uh, peanut slab snack has been created wrapped in specially designed plant-based compostable packaging. Uh, the new packs will be available for just eight weeks as part of a trial in New Zealand's uh, North Island cities of Wellington and uh, Perillia. Uh, consumers can put their used wrappers into collection boxes uh, based on in, in various New World retail outlets which are then taken to a micro farm for composting. So that kind of works because it's very much a, a closed loop uh, collection uh, system. So that takes away some of the challenges of, of collecting and dealing with the compostable packaging. Um, next up is uh, from Italy. Um, this is a Gruppo Colisi uh, and they've introducing 100% compostable packaging for their pasta Agnesi brand. The company claims that using the compostable packaging material is a first for the food company on the global level. Uh, the material was made uh, with bio-based plastic uh, made to be, which is developed by Novamont, who, who many of you uh, will have heard of and have been working in this space for a number of years now. Um, and also in collaboration with four other Italian companies uh, to, to bring this to market. Uh, the new pasta packaging, when disposed of in organic waste, will be transformed into fertilizer after an industrial, an industrial composting process and sees the elimination of approximately 852 tons of plastic. So very clearly there still needs the right uh, infrastructure to deal with that material uh, properly. And it doesn't appear that is, it is at this moment home compostable. Last up for today is a compostable machine grade stretch film um, from uh, Cortex Corp, uh, the Eco Wrap Solution. Uh, makes the commercialization of compostable packaging for stretch film a reality. The material is made with a certified compostable resin combined with uh, an additive. It can be used on most standard automated stretch wrap equipment with multiple applications across industrial packaging and, and, and obviously warehousing industries. Um, most stretch wrap applications require three wraps of standard film. Apparently just two wraps of eco wrap is needed uh, without any functional sacrifice. So obviously using less material as well as being compostable. Uh, and it is also uh, commercially compostable according to the ASTM, uh, ASTM D6400 standards. So uh, hopefully you found those innovations uh, of use. Uh, we're now gonna go over to questions. So Barry, are you online? Yes, I am. Over to you, my friend. Okay, yeah, there's a, a, a lot of questions come in, um, as you would uh, probably uh, anticipate. Um, a number around the sort of moisture barrier of the uh, Sil Silvica um, paper. Um, could you answer that, Christoph, as to what sort of moisture barrier? I'm assuming with metallization, you are going to get some, some form of moisture barrier and how, not only the barrier, but how sensitive this material is to moisture. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's, it's an important point. So um, as every paper, uh, our paper is uh, hydrophilic. OK, so it does not repel water naturally. So it's got a certain level of moisture barrier uh, for those who, who knows about. So WVTR of about uh, 50 to 80, which, which is, which is uh, not enough for many applications, which is better than most of the papers, but not enough for many applications. So. We've got, so the converters are, um, then when, the, when moisture barrier is needed, they are applying a coating to improve moisture barrier. So various coatings now exist. Uh, uh, if I take siren, for example, uh, uh, as a converter, they are reaching now moisture barrier of around uh, 10, values of 10 for WVTR. And you're right, Barry, to mention that when it is uh, metallized, we are reaching in the region of uh, one to two in terms of WVTR values, which is, which is very, very good. So our objective, like everyone, I think, uh, around the planet is to get below one. Uh, and we, we truly believe that we will get below one, but it's not inherent to Silvita. It's really post treatment of Silvita. And then you end up with having oxygen plus aroma plus griefs, plus then moisture when it is uh, added by the converter. Um, several questions about sealing and the sealability. Um, how do you achieve the uh, heat seal capabilities of the paper can you achieve heat seal capabilities for the paper to form a bag etc um, and then also can you apply cold seal to give you a seal um, on the paper yes so both heat seal and cold seal are uh, are working very well 
uh, on, on Silvita. Again, when the paper comes out of the paper machine, it's not heat sealable. Otherwise, you will have issues manufacturing it anyway. <laughs> um, but then it is, it's, uh, it is added at the converter. Uh, so a heat seal coating, which, uh, which is a very uh, traditional, I would say, to then form the bags, the pouches, the standard pouches that I've shared with, uh, with you. And so cold seal does work as well. We've got some applications using cold seal typically for chocolate bars, which don't really like heat. Uh, so cold seal is being applied and, and does seal very well to like, I would say like on any paper. And it's okay to, repart, uh, to apply a cold seal lacquer to, to prevent the cold seal blocking, is it as well? So, sorry? Uh, is it acceptable? Is the, um, the surface acceptable to cold seal lacquers as well? So on the other side of the cold seal structure? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, someone's asked, how do you achieve heat sealability? Uh, sealability? Is that a, a commercial secret at the moment, or is that something you're prepared to, to share? No, heat sealability, I mean, again, it's not done by, by us at our, at our Druidians. It's actually done by, by the converters uh, uh, that we have. So we've got a number of converters. And would they be ready to share? I'm not sure, because <laughs> it's probably their, their secret. So it's not our secret. But I mean, um, Heat sealability is not an issue. You've got a lot of, uh, of heat sealable coatings available on the market that can be applied on the, on the flexo machine or on a coating machine. So it's, to, be, to be fair, it's not rocket science at all to get our paper uh, heat sealable. It's not been, I think the, 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 the more difficult part is really to get it very high moisture barrier, like for, like for any, any material, um, rather than heat seal, which is relatively straightforward from what we know from the converters. So it's not our secret. <laughs> Yep. Sort of related to sealability, can you actually seal on a zipper? Can you uh, put a zipper onto this structure? Yes. Yeah, you can put a zipper. What we, so what we, I know that some, some customers have been trialing it, but then it needs to be trialed with uh, compostable zippers as well to keep the compostability of the whole thing. Otherwise, if it's to add a, a plastic zipper, I think it's not, yeah, it, it kills a little bit the, uh, the, the story. But yes, it is, it can be added, a zipper can be added, yes. Okay. Um, someone's asked if you could comment on the certification for marine degradation. What is the standard? What's the procedure? How do you achieve that? Okay. Um, so we have had it tested by uh, OWS. Uh, so it's a very standard, uh, they call it marine aerobic disintegration test. Okay. So it means that it's, uh, so we've got a report on that. We don't do it ourselves. It's been done uh, by an outside body. What they do is that they, they put uh, our paper into uh, 30 degrees uh, plus or plus minus two degrees water for eight weeks. And then they look at what is, what is left after eight weeks in, uh, in, uh, in this marine environment. And 100% uh, of Silvicta has been degraded after eight weeks. And even in fact, uh, already uh, the biggest part of it was degraded after just four weeks of uh, incubation. Okay. Um... Some questions about liquid. Have you packed any liquid products um, into the into any structures? Uh, we uh, we are uh, we are working on it. It's uh, it's I would say sort of holy grail. Uh, we are working on it. It's difficult because you need to make the paper totally water repellent. So some structures that that customers are looking at is combining our paper with a, with a very thin P layer, for example. So meaning that it's not any more plastic free. So we we know that. But then it still remains recyclable because you'll have a fiber content of above 90%, for example. And that, in that way, we know that it works for, uh, for gels or for uh, mayonnaise, ketchup, or for, for liquids. Fully paper, I would say we're working on it. A couple of questions about barrier. Um, an interesting one. Obviously, we tend to focus on making the barrier very good. Um, a question for people packing produce. Have you looked at microperforations to actually uh, get the barrier, um, you know, reduce the barrier to, to the transfer of gases? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a project. They will be on the same in the same uh, project scope that the, the salad bags, which I can't name because it's under NDA. But uh, there is there are trials on microperforation because you're right. Not all vegetables want, want don't want to breathe. Some of them want actually to breathe. So microperforation uh, or macroperforation works very well, as you see. Yeah. And I think finally, um, with the metallization of the paper, have um, has there been any uh, testing of how that affects the repulpability in 
um, paper mills in, in recycling the paper? Is it at a level which would cause any significant issues? Absolutely. That's, it's very important for us. Anytime we develop or we've got a converter who is developing a solution, we need to, to really understand what the, then the sustainable attributes remain. So it is still recyclable. Yes, uh, we've tested it. So it is still repulpable. Oh, I can't tell on top of my head if the fiber content that we have, but it is it is fully repulpable. It's been it's been tested. Yes, this metalized one. And I suppose the the big question is how much? What's the sort of um, cost difference? Day with standard um, multi layer materials or paper with PLA coatings? How does the this this paper compare in terms of overall cost? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a key question. I, 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 I was quite certain to have it. It's, but unfortunately, there's no straight answer. It really depends on what you're trying to replace. When you're trying to replace a sort of quadruplex, as I was showing in, uh, for pet food, uh, our solution combined to a, to a craft, for example, would be cheaper, actually. But when you're trying to replace only a single uh, P layer, our solution will, will, be, will be higher in terms of cost. So it's not a straightforward uh, answer. It also depends on how much the silvita needs to be enhanced by the converter. Does he need to apply a one layer of heat seal? Probably yes. Does he need to also apply a layer of uh, moisture barrier uh, uh, product? Maybe in some occasions, if it needs to be then, then uh, metallized, it, in it increases. So I'm not going to say that we're a cheap option. Okay, don't take me wrong. We are not a cheap option. Um, we, we know that, but it's, Okay, it's not cheap to produce either. <laughs> and it really depends on what you are trying to, to replace. But I must say that so far of the hundreds of projects that we, that we have started, we've probably had less than a dozen that have been uh, closed because of the, of, the, of the price of it. I'm not saying that we are cheap, but, but it seems that the price that uh, yeah, people can handle with the price premium that we, that we end up with. But again, it depends on the structure. Sometimes we will even end up at par or, or slightly cheaper. Okay, um, just conscious of time. I think we've probably covered the majority of the questions, um, but I'm sure anybody who has any more um, questions could could send through to to Paul or yourself directly, and we'll make sure that um, we connect you up and get those those answered. I just want to say personally that was a really interesting presentation to see how far paper based materials have come in terms of barrier and sealability and such like, and uh, yeah, really really impressive with what product you produce there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks to you.